Hi, my name is Chantel Lender. I'm an RN student and today I'm going to be demonstrating the care of a client requiring IV therapy. First thing that we're going to do, we're going to verify the physician order, then we're going to verify patient allergies, and then we'll perform wipes. Wash your hands, identify your patient by at least two methods, provide for privacy, explain any procedures or interventions that will be performed, and ensure the safety of both the patient as well as the RN. After we've performed all of that, we're going to move on to assessing our IV site. So whenever we are assessing our IV site, we're going to be looking for infiltration, extravasation, or any phlebitis. So we're going to come over to our patient here who has an IV inserted here. And we're going to look for infiltration, extravasation, or phlebitis. Whenever we're looking for that, we're going to be looking for any leakage of blood or fluid at the insertion site, any redness, any swelling, any warmth, or any pain. Our IV site does not have any of that. So then we would perform our med checks. We do four med checks total. You would have done two of them in your med room whenever you were gathering all of your supplies. You do your third one at bedside, your fourth one after you've administered your medication. Before you administer your medication, you're going to perform the six rites, which are right patient, right medication, right dose, right route, right time, and right documentation. So now we are going to change out our IV solution and the administration set. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to get our drip set and we would get it out of the packaging, untangle it, take any of the papers off that would still be on there. And the first thing that we do, once we have our set all the way out, we're going to make sure that we close our clamp. So as we can see, clamp is closed. The spike has a cap on it. The other end also has a cap on it because they are both sterile. For our saline solution, there is also a cap on the end here. Now we're going to go about spiking our bag and sterile touches sterile. So the spike is going to go into the end of our bag here. And then we're going to flip our bag upside down. We're going to fill our drip chamber about 50%. So after we have filled that, we would put it on our IV pole. This is my makeshift IV pole. So now that we have spiked our bag, we're going to unclamp the set and we're going to prime the tubing or we're going to bleed all of the air out of the line. This is my makeshift sink. I'm unclamping the tubing. And as we can see, some fluid is coming out. And you may have to hold the bag a little bit higher. And as we can see, that one big air bubble is making its way down. And then once you have bled all the air out of your line, you're going to close your clamp again. And then as we use this momentarily. So we have our tubing primed, we have the bag spiked. The next thing that we're going to do, we're going to ensure that our IV is still patent. The way that we're going to do that, we're going to take a saline flush and flush it to make sure that whenever we're pushing fluid into the IV, there's no infiltration or anything like that. So the first thing that you have to do, you got to get an alcohol prep bed and then you are going to clean the injection port of the extension set. The way that we're going to do this, we're going to do it in a circular motion for 15 seconds. So Okay, and then we are going to let it air dry for 15 seconds. So while we're waiting for that to air dry, we are gonna prepare our saline flush. So every flush comes with an air bubble in it. So we wanna make sure to flick it and get the air bubble up to the top. And once we get the air bubble up to the top, we're gonna to expel it because we don't wanna be inserting air into our patient. And there's only a little bit. Over there. Okay. 
So it's been about 15 seconds. So now we're going to take our saline flush and we're going to connect it to our extension set. Means Daryl can touch Daryl. So we're going to screw this on. And now that that is on, we are going to flush the IV. The rate that we're going to flush our saline solution or our flush at is one milliliter per minute. And as you can see, there's fluid that's moving through our IV into my bottle or into my patient. We would be watching here for any signs of infiltration, extravasation, or phlebitis, anything like that. Not seeing any bubbling up, not seeing any fluid that's leaking out. And whenever we are flushing the IV, we're going to push about 2 milliliters to 3 milliliters of the saline solution. And again, your rate is 1 milliliter per minute. So once you've completed and you've flushed your IV and there's no infiltration, there are no issues, anything like that, then you're going to disconnect your saline flush. Once you've disconnected your saline flush, you're going to make sure that it goes into a sharp spin. You're going to dispose of it properly into the sharp spin. So we have safely and effectively flushed our IV. We are now disconnecting our saline flush. This is my makeshift sharp spin. So the saline flush is in the sharps. So our IV is patent, the extension set has been cleaned, our tubing, the end of it is still sterile, so now we are going to connect the end of our tubing to the, uh, our extension set of our IV. So we're going to take the cap off. extension set and our tubing. After we have done that, we are going to resume the primary solution at the proper rate. So we're going to unclamp our, we're going to unclamp our clamp. We would we are going to, we would calculate our drip rate we could count that for a full minute and then we would set our drip to the drops per minute. We're also going to label our tubing, which we have right in here. And then you could do the time tape on your IV solution bag. And it's going to be flowing at its rate. As you can see, it is flowing into our bottle. So after we have performed all of this, we are going to properly dispose of everything. We have our sharps that are in our sharps bin. If there was another extension set that we had swapped out, we would properly dispose of that per our facility. Um, any trash, we would make sure that we take it out with us and don't leave it on our patient or in our patient's room and into an appropriate receptacle. After we have completed all of that, we're gonna perform hand hygiene for the appropriate amount of time. Then we're going to go and accurately document everything that we performed on our patient and their patient care record. Throughout the entire skill, we're going to support the concept of infection control. Throughout the entire skill, we're going to support the concept of safety. And then I'm done with this skill.